On October 2nd, 1918, one month before the war ends, the Meuse-Argonne Offensive begins. Hundreds of thousands of American troops stretch from right where I am to Verdun, about 40 miles away. Fresh troops, not troops that have fought for four years like the Germans facing them this way. The Americans and the French on the other side of me are going to start pushing towards the Meuse River and towards the city of Sedan in a big sweeping move that is the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. The main objective was a town called Sedan to cut off German lines 30 or 40 miles north of here. So what happens here where we're talking about? We're talking about this battalion headed by Major Charles Whittlesley and um, some commanders from some other uh, units, the 307th. Whittlesley is the commander of the 308th Battalion. McMurtry is in command of uh, another company of the 308th. Now, what's going to happen is this line where we're standing is where the 308th and some parts of the 307th is going to reach on the first day, October 2nd. The problem is the rest of the Americans don't get this far. They get nowhere. The French barely even start. So these Americans find themselves here where we are, but two miles behind enemy lines. And the Germans realize it very quickly too, and they surround them. So starting on October 2nd, the lost battalion is lost in this ravine that we're going to walk over here and look at. It's about 30 feet deep. The Americans are lost in this ravine. They're in a position about 50 yards wide and 350 yards long. And the Germans are quickly squeezing them on the night of the second, night of the third, night of the fourth, and night of the fifth. While they're being squeezed, Americans are desperately trying to find them. If you look at this, you can't see this from the air. Their firing at the Germans is silent because they can't hear them that many miles away. The only way that the uh, 308th has of communication are carrier pigeons and, um, and, and runners, and they send runners. But if you look behind me, can you imagine sending a runner two miles through that to your friends to get the message through? So not many runners get through. Very few runners get through. But what does get through is carrier pigeons. Carrier pigeons uh, on about the second or third give the wrong location to the artillery as to where the German location is. And the American artillery starts shelling the ravine where the Americans are. Well, friendly fire. Friendly fire kills a lot of people in war. Happens all the time. More carrier pigeons are sent out. The Germans know what a carrier pigeon is and they're gonna shoot them. They kill those pigeons every time they see them. One pigeon though, named Cherami, makes it after being wounded three times, broke leg, shot through the eye, and another place I can't remember. But he, Cherami crashes even and gets up and flies again and carries the message to tell the Americans Stop shelling for goodness sake. That was actually Charles Whittlesley's uh, message to, to the effect of stop firing at us, please. So then, uh, Cherami, by the way, is stuffed and in the Smithsonian Institute uh, in Washington, D.C. Um, she, did, she did survive. Now, the Americans in an attempt to try to rescue them, they're trying to send units from the south coming this way pushing against the Germans, the Germans keep beating them back. The Germans understand how important it is to destroy this battalion. The Americans understand how important it is to, uh, to save this battalion. The Air Corps, the brand new Air Corps starts um, flying missions, trying to find out where they are. You can't see them from the air here. They finally figured out after two or three days, maybe four days, where the Americans were and they were dropping supplies into them and dropping messages and guns, uh, whatever they needed. Um, and then 
on um, on the 6th of October, I believe it is. Uh, on the 6th of October, things started to turn around. The Americans found um, the American Air Force or Air uh, Corps uh, discovered him. There was a pilot named Gottlier and uh, his spotter, his scout, named Irwin Bleckley Jr., who found out where they were and on the 13th mission, which was their second mission of the day, they were trying to drop in as low as they could into this ravine and um, drop into this ravine and show where, uh, show where the Americans were and drop supplies in. And they had to get low. And of course the Germans are gonna be firing at them as they get low. So as the Germans are firing against them, Gottlier gets a, a bullet in the neck and he's dead instantly. And the plane goes on and crashes uh, in French held territory. Bleckley, the spotter, survives the crash. And they get enough messages out and they keep the lost battalion sustained enough to hold out until they're rescued on the sixth day. And that is the legend of the lost battalions of 2001 movie made uh, starring Ricky Schroeder uh, as uh, Colonel Whittlesley. Now, um, that's the end of the story for now. And then I... You know.